Welcome back to Primitive Organic Garden. Today is May 27th. I'm really excited this morning because yesterday I came out and looked at the beautiful flowers on the dandelion and by the time I got back inside, got a drink of water, got my camera or my phone charged rather, I came out and it was hot and all the flowers had already kind of shriveled up for the day. Apparently the dandelion flowers are only beautiful in the morning. I was really worried I wasn't going to get a good picture of these. Um, you can see here some of the dandelion flowers that are already closing because of the heat. But these are still nice and open. This is my first year growing dandelion. Um, this is a massive plant. I mean, this is a 8x8 uh, eight eight raised bed here, and this plant's just taken up a good half of it. it fell over. I have another dandelion plant with the blue flowers that fell over. I can't remember where I got seeds for these. It was some, uh, maybe it was Baker Creek. It was some rare seed place, and, uh, it was like some Italian selection of dandelion. Um, <clears throat> some of them had really, really deep burgundy in the stems and in the leaves. So you can see this is the plant and it's gonna have plenty more flowers on it pretty soon. Uh, it's just a massive plant. I don't think I can really move it at this point. It's just kind of fallen over. Um, but yeah, the blue flowers are just gorgeous. Here's another one. Huge plants. You know, I think when most people think of dandelion, they're thinking about, you know, the traditional dandelion you see in a lot of yards, like this one. And, you know, when the plants are small, the leaf shape is identical. I mean, you look at this dandelion leaf here from this, and we carry that over and look at, you know, this looks a lot different in the floral form, but you pull off one of its leaves. As you can see, the cultivated one is the same leaf, it's just a larger leaf. It's interesting. Anyway, really glad y'all got to see that this morning. Um, I've been telling everybody about the dandelion with the blue flowers and everybody keeps looking at me like I'm nuts. So here it is. It's beautiful. Got some other wildflowers going on here. Planted all these from seed, just kind of going around the garden, tossing seed in places where I didn't really have crops growing. Doing all no-till this summer. You can see I took the winter crops and just chopped them and dropped them where they were and added a little bit of compost to the top of the soil and didn't bother tilling or weeding or hoeing or cultivating anything this year. Gonna try a whole summer of no-till here in the swamp. Eggplants are finally starting to do well. Eggplants, what I'm most excited about this summer. Um, I think these are the white eggplants, the Caspers. Uh, it gets really, really hot here in the summer and really, really wet. And I've never grown eggplant before. Apparently, eggplant does really well with hot and wet. Sunflowers are getting kind of big. Stuck up pepper in the ground, it's probably gonna die from the first good rain. More sunflowers. This tomato is doing shockingly well considering it's just sitting in the grass. Got some more tomatoes.
This sunflower is looking nice. This is now taller than me and I'm 5'10". Flowers on the garlic are gorgeous. I don't think I've ever really gotten to see that before. All my strawberries are getting eaten by roly polies. I think I'm just gonna rip up all these strawberries pretty soon. This crazy insect has been here for two days. Not in this exact same spot, but around here. This is the biggest grasshopper cricket looking thing I've ever seen. It's a very pretty color. Need to stake these tomatoes. Another eggplant doing well. Lots of disease on the tomatoes this year. Um, it's been a rough year for tomatoes in terms of disease. I haven't had a lot of insect pressure. I haven't seen a single hornworm yet this year on my tomatoes um, yeah I mean it's been an interesting year for the tomatoes hardly any insect pressure but tons of disease this year <clears throat> this kale is a monster still got a lot of these harlequin bugs couldn't eat all the red lettuce fast enough it's flowering Another eggplant. Pepper, flamingo chard. Some type of pumpkin, I think. Tomato. Some kale and spearmint. Another tomato. And a lot of peppers this year. A lot more than most years. I got a yellow bell peppers, a big berth of bell pepper, a couple of dragon cayennes, some pepperoncinis, um, these peppers are getting shaded out by the squash, some massive squash, these are supposed to be cucumber plants but one of them looks like a squash, this other one definitely looks like a cucumber. But uh, you know, this is a really interesting cucumber plant. It's only one plant and it's got probably a dozen of these side shoots coming off of it. It's pretty impressive for a cucumber. I'm not used to seeing that. Another big pepper here. Peppers are starting to look good for this year. They were slow to start because we had such a cool spring, but temperatures are finally warming up. So peppers are starting to come on. I think this is the Big Bertha. This is the Pepperoncini. I don't know what this is. This is another one of them plants I thought was a cucumber that looks more like a squash. About done with peas for the year. It's just way too hot. Still got plenty of peas I need to pick, but that'll be the end of them. Two more peppers there. of beans, a moringa plant, maybe another cucumber, random radish, another pepper, sunflowers, some radishes, squash, some other random stuff, chard, tomatoes, some purple beans, Brussels sprout, a lot of this is uh, doomed. Trailer Park's about to steal my fence, and I took a couple of uh, potted plants, stuff in buckets, for a little experiment, stuck them outside of the fence for a couple days, and they all got absolutely eaten. So I'm pretty sure once they steal my fence, a lot of my crops are gonna get destroyed. But we'll see. Maybe some things will survive. That's a pretty little flower. I don't think I've noticed that one before. Telling y'all, I ended up putting the compost pile this year inside of a garden bed because I realized it doesn't make sense to be putting the compost pile away from the garden and then constantly having to move compost to the garden 
and still having the plants that grow near the compost pile being the best looking plants as opposed to the ones in the garden. So I figured it just made more sense. I got, you know, 15 different raised beds now. I can just rotate at any point in time. One raised bed will have a compost pile in the center of it. And that raised bed will just get some extra fertility for that season. And, you know, every couple months I'll just move the compost pile to a different raised bed. I got a pumpkin, but a vine borer got to it the other day. We'll see what happens. Some more beans back there. This area is too shady for much more than just herbs. I think I'm going to stop trying to plant vegetables over here in the summer and just plant herbs over here. Um, I can do vegetables over here in the winter because this is a, a type of oak tree that loses its leaves in the winter. So I can do some winter crops over here and it's essentially a lot more sun. Uh, but in the summer it's very shady. Uh, so I just need to start doing herbs over here. But, Kale does well over here. Got some flour and lettuce here. This thing. So much flowers. That is really cool. I'm sure the park's gonna harass me about it and say I need to chop them all down because it looks like weeds, but those are just beautiful. I think it's some type of aster. Some lettuces here. Pretty lettuce. Some more lettuce going to flower. Couldn't eat my lettuce fast enough. Some tomatoes growing next to the compost pile, just kind of doing their thing. Recharge down there in between the squashes. I can't wait to see this leek flower. It's a gorgeous looking leek. Some more lettuces. Chard. Some parsley. Cucumber. Not seeing much action with ochre yet at all this year. I think the soil temperatures have just not been warm enough and I've direct seeded okra a couple different times this season and I've seen like maybe three or four plants pop up. Um, sunflowers are popping up. Got one more moringa plant I need to do something with. A Malabar spinach plant. Didn't have very good luck with basil this year either. I've seeded basil in trays like four or five times and I've gotten a couple varieties to pop up like the, um, the cinnamon or licorice basil popped up pretty well but most of my other basils haven't popped up. Got some maters turning ripe kind of early because this plant's got some disease. It's a shame. Lots of disease this year. Some more uh, char hiding between the peas and the carrots. I really love chard. It's one of my favorite vegetables to grow. Well, uh, I guess that's about it for today. Just kind of wanted to give you all a quick update on some of the stuff that's going on in the garden this week. Specifically picking our first tomatoes. I should have made a video of that the other day, but some of these uh, Big mortgage lifters over here. These are some of the smaller ones. I left on the plant But um, I picked two of these off yesterday Two big ones that were fully ripe and pulled a garlic bulb out of here but um, well, There's a cucumber hiding over there. It's about to try to climb the dandelion. That'll be fun to watch but um yeah, everything's doing pretty well. I'm just not eating things as fast as I wish I could, but I probably just need to start selling some of the produce because I can't eat it fast enough. Um, yeah, I wanted to get a couple good pictures of all the flowers here because I'm pretty sure they're going to harass me about them and try to get me to chop them down. So 
And so you need to weed work. So these are for the pollinators. And the line. Well, thank you all for tuning in today.